Greetings YouTube and welcome to the blue corner. In this video we're going to be doing a card if I make a deck profile and it's going to be on actually something I haven't had a chance to do a profile yet and that will be Dragonic Vanquisher Narakami i.e. Thunderstrike the deck and yeah I meant to do this when set 5 came up but by the time I got everything to finish this deck Fighter Collection had been spoiled and I wanted to just wait until I got my hands on Voltex Napper Dragon and the expanded G-Zone before I could actually do something like this but as far as this deck goes, I've seen a lot of people out there say that this is the best variation of Narakami for competitive play post fire section, and I have to disagree with that one. This deck's good, but <clears throat> it's not as consistent as Kaiser and Brawler, and as a result, it falls short of performing as well as those two decks do, and that's because A, the Thunder Strike mechanic is not as good as the other keyword mechanics out there. There's not, a lot, not enough support to make a Thunderstrike deck work. So you're basically just playing Gene Arakami from set two with a couple extra cards tacked onto it. And while they do make Vanquisher decent enough to stand on its own two legs and it's better than Erads, um, I think it just ultimately falls short of being able to do what it wants to do. Partly because if you don't actually ride Vanquisher, the deck falls apart because so many of your good rear guards and strides rely on his constant binding effects in order to actually be of any value and if you end up riding any other grade three it just doesn't really work as well like you aren't binding as efficiently and therefore your voltage turns become significantly weaker whereas if you're on vanquisher you're basically binding two cards a turn which really adds up so that's the gist of it and like thunderstrike itself just needs more good units to work off of it because right now thunderstrike is more or less just an additional generation break on top of your generation breaks because thunderstrike 2 unless you happen to have vanquisher as vanguard and your pia in play you're not really going to be e achieving that that easily unless you run the starter here that which i am because you need to bind as fast as possible even though i don't like that starter and otherwise though, like this deck is very good at hitting high numbers I'd liken it to a bit to a glass can in that sense, actually, where your voltage turns allow you to hit for some huge numbers, but otherwise, though, it's like uh, all the other Narakami decks can play the good strides that the, this deck has outside of voltage better. Anyway, so let's get started. So for the starting Vanguard, I'm running Wild Run Dragoon. In my opinion, I think this card is awful, but you're pretty much forced to run it in a bind-oriented Narakami deck because it's a guaranteed bind, which combined with Vanquisher's stride skill and Mighty and uh, Blitzfair Dragoon's on-ride skill will guarantee Thunderstrike 2 on your first stride, which will allow your powerful... Well, granted, I'm not running any Thunderstrike rear guards, but it gets you two cards closer to a really sweet voltage turn, which is ideally seven cards or more bound, so... It gets you there, and it also helps set up your G Guardian if you only get the stride once and you need the guaranteed Thunder Strike. Like, uh, his ability is you throw him into the soul, and your opponent binds a card from their drop zone, and then Thunder Strike 2, you give one of your rear guards plus 5,000 power until end of turn. So, at its core, it's a neg 1 that tries to trade itself off for soft advantage by forcing extra cards out of your opponent's hand, but unless it's a Shotra you're throwing this thing on, they're just going to no guard the hit. Whereas Saishin is a guaranteed kill, and no, uh, what's this one? Uh, Spark Kid Dragoon is a potential grade three search. But again, since you need to have a large amount of cards bound for Voltage and Voltex Zapper Dragon, you kind of just need to grin and bear and just work with this guy. So, uh, yeah, I've had things on my mind about this starter for a while it's just i never actually got around to talking about it because i never again uploaded this deck until just now sorry for the delay on that but it took me forever to find a fourth copy of the gv1 stand trigger that i wanted to run a play set up for this deck and yeah so anyway all right so for the grade threes four copies of journal vanquisher this is the stride break of the deck and the heart and soul of it Vanquisher's skills are Cannabis 1 on stride, choose one of your opponent's rear guards in the front row, retire it, and bind it face up. And then GB2, when your opponent's rear guard is put into the drop zone by one of your card effects, you can have him gain 4k and a crit. Now right now, that skill is not very good, as in my opinion, you shouldn't really... If you're ever at a point where you're not striding, something has gone horribly wrong. But it is something that comes up, you can like, kill two things and stack crits and such on him. 
This skill though will become more important when we get a Denial Griffin clone, or if we get one, as being able to kill something during your opponent's turn to have, and then have this guy gain 4k and a crit so that he becomes 15k base, that is very important for defensive purposes and I'm hoping that will be what the case is. But for now though, it's eh. You're just using this guy for his name and to help set up the bind zone because you need to get your opponent again at seven cards bound pretty quickly. Oops, I almost went to my strike zone. Then for the back upgrade three, to be or for honest, your options for this slot are very, very limited. It just comes down to right now what kind of G Guardian lineup you have. Like if you're running more copies of the Narakami G Guardian as opposed to Screw and Dismal. Uh, then you can run Mighty Bolt Dragoon, Split Spear Dragoon. So his skill is on right, kind of one, sold last one. Choose a rear guard your opponent's front row, retire and find a face up. So it's Pankercher Stride Break, but on ride, and that's it. It's not GB1 though, so that's good. And the second skill is GB1. When he attacks the Vanguard, he gains 2k for every one of your opponent's bound cards on the end of turn. Uh, Thunder Strike currently does not have a backup grade 3 like how Inus is there for Asha the deck, so. Yeah, the only other Thunderstrike grade 3 out there is 2 hits full Jin, which I'm not a fan of right now. Because, well actually no, I guess with this list I could enable it easier, but I'd rather not run them at the moment. Uh, the other options you could run are Great Composure Dragon for his 12k base, or another idea that I've toyed with is Gauntlet Buster Dragon and build the deck more around getting Finish Blow Dragon off before going for your bigger plays, but you can also run Dragon Kaiser. Crimson and a Vermilion in here too. Like, your backup grade 3 is irrelevant because basically if you're ever on your backup grade 3, you're going to feel sad. But you need to run more than 4 grade 3s in this list. Then for the grade 2s, we have your usual fare for these decks. So 4 Amber Clones, so Folded Torn Dragon. For those of you who may forget what his ability is, when he attacks a Vanguard and is boosted GB1, your opponent kills a rear guard and binds a face up. So, it's so, a very simple means of setting up your opponent's bind zone for your later turns. Four copies of Mighty Bolt Dragoon. This is the Benazel clone for the deck, so Counter Plus 1, Soul Plus 1, on call. When your Vanguard is Grade 4 greater with Vanguard in its card name, your opponent kills a rear guard and retires a face up and he gains 2k until end of turn. Kinda wish he also he instead gained 2000 power for each of your opponent's bound cards as a Thunder Strike 2 ability. Just saying. And finally, four copies of everyone's favorite Shatara. We all know what this card does at this point. On hit, pressure, draws cards, sets up bind zone, not GB1. It's a very good card. Then for the grade ones, we have your obligatory four perfect guards, your four stride assists, your four Pia clones, which is Chain Bolt Dragoon. Skill is when your opponent's rear guard is put into the drop zone by one of your card effects and you have a Vanquish of Vanguard. Your opponent, you can make your opponent bind a card from their drop zone face up and give one of your other units 2k power. Actually, is it during your turn or is it just period? Let's see. Oh no, so it's during either player's turn in this instance. Excellent, so yeah, this will be relevant too when we get a G Guardian because you can turn Vanquisher into a 13k base coupled with his GB2 skill. Would actually make him. Ooh, that would make him 18k. Damn, that's actually an interesting and potentially good thing to know in the future. But anyway, so it's just there to set up your opponent's drop zone. Ideally, you want to have two of these out as soon as possible, so I'm maxing out on my copies of this. But when we get our Thunderstrike version of this, which is hopefully going to be an unflipper, then I'll cut two. And then lastly, two copies of Wyvern Strike Pokemon, because I, for one, cannot seem to draw attackers for the life of me, despite running 12 of them. So I'm running these guys as things I can move up to the front after they've boosted Chakra and Chakra gets killed because he draws out attacks like no tomorrow. He's like Tidal Assault. And then for the trigger lineup, this is where things are going to get a little bit crazy compared to at least most lists I've seen. I'm running five crits, which is one Malevolent Jin and four Resef, who is your throbbing or heart dunk worker. There we go. I keep wanting to call him Buzz name. <laughs> so yeah, throw him into the soul when your Vanquisher attacks. Draw a card, gain 5k. Four heals and four stands and three draws. So I'll talk about the draws first. This deck needs a hand as it's a very combo oriented, so you need to draw pieces, but at the same time, I didn't want to cut my draw triggers out. Uh, I didn't want to cut out uh, four crits entirely, four threes, things. I don't like running rainbows triggers in here. 
So I just decided to go with a nice little number of three. This has been working out okay for me. Uh, if we ever get a grade one damage flipper, though, I'm going to cut these stand triggers out, whose ability is when your opponent's rear guard is put into a drop zone, GB1, shuffle them to the deck, draw a card on flipper damage. It's what allows me to play such a counter blast heavy build so far, is that I'm able to unflip a damage each time I draw this. And I play big columns, so a stand trigger being checked during voltage turns is not the worst thing that can happen. But uh, I know I could probably just run Rising Phoenix in here. Although I've noticed that with uh, this guy, I tend to have a conflict of soul in that way. And like if I end up using Phoenix, then I'm not going to pull off multiples of these in a game, and I value getting this guy's skill off more consistently than getting the draw off of Phoenix, so I've upped my draw trigger ratio in order to compensate for that. But yeah, in a perfect world, I'd just run the standard 8 crits, 4 draw, 4 heal, but this list just needs to stand in order to function. And yeah. So for the stride deck, I'm running 4 copies of Dragonic Magnusher Voltage. This is the... Stride Fusion of Vanquisher, and it's an okay one. It's definitely no Dream Spinning Asha or Aerial Altmile, but it's better than Susano. <laughs> yeah, but it's also, but it could be a lot stronger. Like, I look at Blade Master Titan and I look back at this guy and be like, oh, granted, this guy isn't exactly awful. It's just Titan's killing power is better, whereas this guy's killing power is not guaranteed. As his skill is G Flip, he gains the ability of. On hit, your opponent kills one of their rear guards and you bind two from drop zone. That's eh. His second effect, though, is really good, it's a, which is G GB3. During your turn, your front row gains 3k for every one of your opponent's bound cards. So, if your opponent is at three or less cards bound, he's basically a weaker Conquest Dragon. But once they're at four cards and above, he's a better Conquest Dragon. And, well, Conquest Dragon is kind of a really good card. And this guy is just a bigger one. It's just unfortunately you can't splash this guy into other Narakami decks because of the Vine Zone requirement. If I were to go back, if I had the power to redesign this card, I would make it kind of last one, flip anything. For each face-up copy of this card in your opponent's, in your G-Zone, your opponent chooses a rear guard, retires it, and binds it face-up, and then Thunder Strike 3, your front row gains 3k for every one of your opponent's bound cards. That's what I would have done with this guy to make him good and splashable in other variations. As it is, you can only play him in this list. I'm hoping that when we get our next Vanquisher Stride, it has an ability similar to the one I described with, I don't know, an extra crit as a bonus. But as it is though, this is your main win con. And once you set it up, your opponent is hopefully going to be dead because you're going to be swinging with 21 to 30k columns. I've even had as high as including boosters and triggers i think i hit seventy thousand with this guy like he gets your guys really freaking big and that's basically what narakami g zones are all about is they either kill things or get your rear guards really big and what better example of this than with good old conquest dragon even now this is still the best overall stride for the narakami card pool as he's a costless retire and a free 10k buff to the front row, regardless of the circumstances. Unless your opponent has a full front row, but if they have a full front row, chances are you're going to be going for Vanquish of Voltage instead, or for another card that kills things. It's just, you play Conquest Dragon if your opponent has either only one regard in the front row, no front row because they're playing something like Grand Blue or Pale Moon, or you G-Guardian and we're able to stride into this thing first. G-Guardian allow Guardians allowing you to stride into Conquest first is a very good play for this deck and I definitely like it. Although G-Guardians existing does make Conquest turns a bit weaker as you need to have boosters otherwise they can just G-Guard off whatever you buff, buff up with Conquest. But Conquest is still a very amazing card and because of the G-Zone expansion there is no excuse to be running any less than four. If you're running only two in your list I think you're crazy. Then for the backup, uh, or rather just the utility guys, first one Voltex Zapper Dragon. This is from the Fighters Collection, and his ability is Thunder Strike 3, which pretty much limits him to only this deck. When this unit attacks, he gains 10k, and a new ability of, at the end of the battle, that this guy attacked, kind of Blast 1. Your opponent chooses a rear guard for every two of their bound cards, retires it, and binds a face up. So he's a potential board wipe, although in order to get the full board wipe, you need to have 10 cards bound. 
but he can also just be used to set your opponent up for a better voltage turn. Like if your opponent is at six cards bound, so probably your second or third strike turn, then he just gets you three cards close to that, which is another 9k. So he's just a good utility card. Only running one though, because I wanted to fit in some other cards in here. One copy of Finish Blow Dragon. Because of G Guardians allowing you to get GB2 easier, this is a more viable option as a tech spot. Like his ability is kind of us one. GB2, flip anything. And then for the rest of this turn, he gets the ability of whenever your opponent's rearguard is put to drop zone by one of your card effects, 5k and a crit. It's a very good pressure skill, much like with Blade Master Titan, in that you can use it to catch up to your opponent in damage if they're at 2 damage and you're at 4 and you need them to be at 5 for your conquest and such turn. You can just swing with this guy. They'll either no guard it and you could potentially flip a crit and kill them. Or they'll just guard it because they don't want you to flip a crit and kill them, which is one PG out of the way for your big push turn. Now, granted, G Guardians have made this guy a lot easier to deal with, as Screw in general can just put their guy up to 36. Yeah, they can. Screw can put the, their guy up to 36, and they can just slap a 10k down, and this guy's probably not going to hit unless you happen to throw a booster behind him or some more guys. But it's still a good pressure card. One copy of Zora's for your first stride play if you aren't at GB2. I really wish we had a better opening stride play, but as it is, we're still forced to run this guy, which makes me sad, because he's just... Uh, like, I don't like on hits at this time, but you kind of just have to make do with what you got. And then for the last stride, one air on Seabreeze. So this guy's ability is kind of last two. If you're on a grade three Vanguard and your opponent is on a grade two Vanguard and they didn't ride during their turn, you stride this guy. So it allows you to stop your opponent from grade locking and for this deck, that's very important as every one of your good skills is a GB1. So this guy basically turns that on and allows you to just start binding stuff and just making your guys better. So just the one of the, in the future, this is probably going to get cut just because I would like to think that Seabreeze being in the format is going to cut people from playing the grade two game entirely. And then I can cut this card out and actually run something else in the slot like a fifth G Guardian because I only have four at the moment and I would like to run five in here. But, yeah, uh, you gotta make sacrifices. Then for the G Guardians, two copies of Lightning Emperor Vitra. So his skill is Thunderstrike 1. When his unit is placed on Guardian Circle, he gains 5,000 shield. This is both one of the better uh, G Guardians out there and one of the worst ones because of its requirements. In Vanquisher, the requirement is piss easy to make. In other decks, no, he's not. So... Uh, Rip Brawler, Rip Kaiser, and Rip Eradicators. Unless you happen to land a Chakra hit, you aren't getting the Thunderstrike one off. But in this deck, he's gonna—he's a guaranteed 20k shield, which is very good, since it allows this deck to guard and use less cards in its hand to guard, which has always been a, an issue for Narakami variants. One copy of Dark Element Dismal. So its ability is when it's placed on Guardian Circle, you can choose one of your units, and it gets what I like to call immunity, in that. It can't be hit or targeted by attacks or, or effects for the rest of the turn. Which, side note, makes Kaiser very sad. Because this guy basically can help your opponent stop two of the three attack hits that uh, Warning would make. And this guy also is one of the few ways to stop Big Bang Knuckle Turbo. So, uh, this is one of the cards that makes it so that playing Narakami is not as strong as it used to be just because he can screw over some of your best plays, but he's still a good card though for our decks because it allows you to protect Chatura or such. And then last of a copy of Mela Element Screw, whose ability is when it's placed on Guardian Circle and you have an already face up a G unit in your, uh, in your zone, you can discard a card to have him gain 10,000 more shield. So he becomes a 30, uh, no, a 26k shield, which puts you at 36. Yeah, you know, wait. Yeah, he's a 25 plus your 11, yeah, 36. So, yeah, he helps you block bigger attacks easier. And that's pretty much it for the list itself. Uh, it's an okay deck against. It's good against things that are of its similar class. So, I would say, like, G Mega Colony. Gene Overgrafter to some extent, although they have, uh, Victor turns can, uh, wreck him. Yeah, just any of their big stride turns, though, are really difficult to deal with. But, like, if you go up against, like, what are some good examples? Like, Jijotsi Chaze, like, basically, if you don't go up against any of the tier 1 decks, 
you'll do great. But once you start going up against things like Paladins, Gears, uh, things start going back. Hell, even Neo Nectar pushed my shit in when I was playing this. And that was friggin' off. Granted, Asha is very good for, because it's had three blocks of support, whereas Vanquishers only had two. So there's a bit of a gap between the two lists. But yeah, that's it for the deck itself. Stay tuned as I'll have a Brawler and a Kaiser list up soon enough. And until then, this is, uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks you all for watching. Until next time, this is Blue39, jacking out.